having a frame and printed parts and shafts and bearings and motors and steppers and lead screws and nuts is all very well and good but you need something to control it and something to call your printers as well so that's what we're taking a look at <laughs> Hello everyone, Adam here from CRT. Today we're looking at some of the control mechanisms on my custom 3D printer. Let's start by looking at the control board. I'm currently using the Arduino Mega 2560 with the Ramps 1.4. A fairly standard, cheap setup just to get me started. I'm using the DRV8825 stepper drivers with a 132 micro stepper. This works all right, but it's not perfect. I'd like some sort of quieter stepper motors, a bit more reliable board and that sort of thing. So for that, I'm looking at two things at the moment, the Rearm project and the Duet Wi-Fi. Rearm is a reimagining of the Arduino Mega 2560, which is a direct drop-in replacement. So you can just put your ramps board on top, stepper drivers, plug everything back in as normal, and you're off. It runs a, I believe, Smoothie firmware, which is just placed on an SD card in the side, and it's so easy to change the, uh, change the firmware and everything like that. It gives more power available for running the printer, so you get more accurate and quicker control, which means faster prints and all that sort of thing. So that's one option. The second thing I'm looking at is the Duet Wi-Fi, another control board 32-bit processor that has many of the same benefits as the Rearm would supply. If you know your Rearm from your ramps and your smoothie, let me know in the comments below what you would recommend and the reasons why. The why is always important to me. So if you could, that would be lovely, thank you. From the control board, we go over to the stepper motors. In my project, there will be three different stepper motors and a total of five stepper motors. The Z-axis will be NEMA 17s, 39 millimeters long, with integrated 300 millimeter lead screws, with which the lead nut comes as well. These are single star two millimeter pitch lead screws, which give you a lot of torque and very fine precision for that z-axis. The second pair are the XY pair. These are a standard, really, 39mm with a D-shaft for placing a 20-tooth pulley on the top. And that will drive the X and Y components of the Core XY printer. The final stepper motor is a pancake stepper motor. It's, again, a NEMA 17, but has a third the power of normal and about half the weight. Because it's half the weight and a third the power, we combine it with the Titan extruder, which gives, well, three times the power because of the gearing ratio, and you end up with something that's still about half the weight, but equal power to the normal Never 17. Alongside the Titan extruder, I have an E3D V6 hot end, the 1.75 millimeter universal hot end. After the plastic comes out of the hot end, I've got two 40 millimeter noise blocker fans to cool it down. And my voice is definitely going. To accompany the ramps, I have an LCD screen with the integrated SD card reader. It's the same I have on my Prusa clone, and probably the same on many other Prusa clones and other clone printers out there. It's a low cost option, but it does work. At the moment, I'm printing pretty much solely through Octoprint, but I've recently learned that the Arduino USB controller is actually very slow. So as soon as you increase your printing speed past 40, 50 millimeters a second, any curves which require more computation end up stuttering and causing bad quality in the print. So printing from SD card reader is actually probably better until I get an up and until I get an upgraded board. For end stops on the printer, I was originally planning to use auto leveling. So an inductive sensor near to the hot end that would probe the bed and level it for me. But since my design has a very rigid bed, a very rigid frame, I don't think I really need the auto leveling. It'll be a level once and leave for six months before you need to level it again. So that extra weight on the sort of moving assembly is just sort of excess. It's not needed, it's not required. I'm quite happy to level a bed even once a week to get consistent prints. And I think I'd rather do that than mess around with this extra automotive inductive sensor that needs a metal bed and all this kind of stuff as well. So I'm sticking with three micro switches, one for each axis. The Z axis will have a screw adjustment and the X, Y will just be placed approximately where they need to go, and that'll be good enough. The end stops will clamp onto the shafts, and they'll be just sit and leave. Easy. So for now, that's it for my custom 3D printer design. There'll be one more episode, and hopefully then we'll be releasing it. I'm very excited. I'm very close to having that all completed, and I can't wait to sort of show it to everyone, and for you guys to try it as well. So 
if you want to know when that's available, don't forget to subscribe for that upload video, the released status. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Oh, if you want to watch more videos from me, links are going to be at the end. Thank you very much for watching. This has been CRT.